Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as we take this version of the Pronto with 48 wings, 48 inch wingspan and then go to, to this. Let's get to it. The Pronto I built uh, a while back from plans. Uh, the link is uh, uh, in the description for Model Airplane News. It's a, a, an airplane design back in the um, 1970s. It was a very popular sport plane, a 0.15-inch uh, gas engine, flew well. I always had my eye on it. I built it again for electric-powered, converted it to four channels with ailerons, and the um, plane flew absolutely great. Let's just take a quick look at how that airplane flew. So the plane had plenty of power, nice size wing. It absolutely is one of my best flying airplanes. It's very common when you build airplanes to make versions either smaller or bigger. So in this video, we're going to make a half size version of the Pronto. Now I've done this before and I'll give a link up here. This is a um, Lazy Bee aircraft that I just took the plans from the internet and made this size out of foam board. We're going to take a kind of similar approach with the Pronto. It has a 40, 48 inch wingspan, which is going to take every dimension of that airplane and cut it in half. So now the wing will be 24 inches instead of 48. As I was doing an internet search, and there's a link for these documents in the description, I actually found the original plans uh, that um, Dave Roblin drew for the Pronto. I mean, with dimensions and they're written and they're, they're to scale. So I use this as a basis to draw up a set of plans of the half size Pronto. And I simply took pieces of paper, taped them together, and drew out the plans here. This is the half size fuselage and landing gear located here. And here is a outline of the now 24 inch wingspan that we will use as a basis to build the model. I plan on using balsa wood to build this model just for lightweight. And I'll use some sort of iron, lightweight <coughs> iron on covering for this. I've also picked out a motor. This is a, um, a part zone 370. Uh, this will be absolutely plenty of power. Depending how the model comes out with weight, I may put on a smaller one. You'll see. And I'm planning on a two cell battery. I mentioned this because the battery is important. The battery is about one and a half inches wide. So I've got to make sure the fuselage is at least one and a half inches wide to put in the battery. So there might be some alterations from a pure half size uh, reduction of the full one uh, going in here to make sure the battery and the motor uh, fit. As I mentioned, this version will have four channels as well. So we'll have servos for the ailerons. Um, I may have to adjust the length of the nose a little bit to help with the center of gravity. If it looks like it's going to be tail heavy, it may extend the nose a little bit to help with that. And I think that's about it for design considerations. Again, I'll be using balsa throughout the whole model, and I will describe as I build it as we go through the build. Here are the plans on the building board. There's my stack of balsa that I'm going to be using to build the airplane wax paper to keep the wood parts being glued to the um, plans. And just a simple pencil sketch to see where things go. This is a rib outline, and I have to make about 14 ribs, I believe, for um, this particular design. You just trace it out onto the balsa, and you cut it out with an X-Axo knife. This is what you have at the end. All the ribs, they're pretty close. You'll have to sand them a little bit to fit them in, but it's, uh, it works fine for an airplane like this. Here's a completed wing half with the ribs in place, the top and bottom spars, some shear webs, and you see this is coming together fairly well. 
Here are both wing halves with some plywood joining them in the middle, the dihedral in place, and the ailerons uh, at the back end of the wing. Time now to look at the fuselage. This is one fuselage side, plywood former, uh, ply uh, balsa for the two formers at the front and um, trailing edge of the wing, and the other side will go on there shortly. These are the fuselage sides glued in place. And you can see the motor is screwed in there with a cutout for the wires to go to the back into the fuselage where the uh, electronic speed controller and battery would be located. The top covering of the fuselage is in place here. And you can see the motor mounted. Little dash panel. This is where the landing gear will go, plywood. And I'm going to keep the rear open just to save a little bit of weight on uh, the finished model. I've made a lot of progress on the Mini Pronto. Let's uh, take a moment to catch up, see where we are. Here's the wing right here. Again, the original Pronto at a 48 inch wingspan. This is 24 inches, a little bit of dihedral, some ply, very light ply bracing on the middle. And this is the wing. So one thing I want to point out is with these smaller models, you've got to really think ahead where the servos are going to go because they, they're not going to fit everywhere. So I think the best bet is to put the servos sideways here. I have tape just to hold them in place so I can do some more adjustment here. Then when it comes time <clears throat> to install them, I'm going to hot glue them. But because this is such a tight installation with a small model, my plan is to cover with iron-on covering the bottom of the wing first, glue in the servos, then put the covering on the top, and that way um, we'll, we'll basically seal them inside the wing, which is okay for a model like this. And again, the two servos will be connected with a Y connector, and then the uh, strip ailerons will be on the back here. So that's the plan for the, um, for the wing. The fuselage is here. I think this is coming along nicely. I've decided to use a smaller motor. This is the uh, Power APAC from the flight test, folks. I had it on the um, Mini Tiny Tutor. It gave a lot of thrust. I think it's probably a drone motor, but at any rate, it, it works out fine, lightweight. I think it'll be just fine for this model. I put the 1 inch sheet on the top. I'm going to leave the bottom open just to save a little bit of weight. Again, you can see the elevator and rudder servos in here. And a technique to install the servos is I wrap or I apply masking tape to the servo. Then I hot glue the servo to the side of the fuselage. The reason for the hot glue is... When I take off the servo, I just simply remove the tape. The glue doesn't stick to the servo, so it helps it to last a little bit longer. Electronic speed control and so forth. One thing you have to keep in mind as you're building, again, these smaller models, <clears throat> think ahead to your formers and make sure that you have room to fit in your battery. The idea is this will be a hatch. This will open and shut with some screws to hold it in place. And there's plenty of room to install the battery. I'm not sure where the battery has to go. That would I'll be able to move it anywhere to achieve the center of gravity uh, on the uh, model. The other thing I want to point out is this is a 166 inch plywood plate. This will be glued in place, and the landing gear will be installed right here. So what I plan on doing is a very old technique with um with modeling, but it still works just fine. I'm going to drill a series of very small holes all around where this landing gear wire is. I'll take thread, wrap it around the gear to hold it in place, then smear five minute epoxy on it. It's a really simple, lightweight, easy way to hold on the gear that's been used since the 1930s, basically. But it's, it's worth reminding folks of doing that now. Then we'll have the landing gear in place. So the tail surfaces are just going to be 1 16th inch balsa. There's no issue with that. Now the hatch will be 1 16th inch. So I think we're making good progress. And um, that's where we are right now. So I'm going to show you a, a decision we're going to make. I'm putting on the landing gear before we sew it on. I need to show you now before I drill the holes. So here is the fuselage. This is the bottom where the landing gear is going to go. This is the plywood plate where it's going to go. Now we have a choice of the landing gear. We can put it outside, which is fairly easy, and we'll use the thread to sew it on. Or we can put this on the inside of the plate. I just have to cut some notches here. We'll still sew it on, but the it'll be on the inside. I think this will look a little bit better. So what I'll do is I'll cut a couple of notches here. Around this wire here, I'll just drill some small holes on either side, and then I'll sew on the landing gear, put on some epoxy, and that should complete the uh, installation. 
This is the 1 16th inch ply landing gear plate with the notches cut out for the landing gear. I'll trial fit the landing gear to make sure the notches clear it on the side of the fuselage. And the next step will be to draw some uh, lines around the landing gear so I know where to drill the holes for the thread that will then attach the, the landing gear to this plate. These are the lines that I discussed. This will be the guide for drilling the holes for the thread, and there the holes are right there. We'll use metallic beading thread to, to put it on. So here there the thread is around the plate, as well as the glue on the top to keep everything where it should be. I've completed the, uh, the um, sewing of the landing gear to the bottom ply plate using beading wire. And you can see this is what will be on the outside. And this is the top with the epoxy on there. And the next step will be simply with a fuselage to glue this to the bottom like this. And this is what it'll look like on the outside. And that's the side view of your landing gear installed in the airplane. Time now to work on the tail section. You can see the plans at a 16 inch stab. You just divide it by half, it'll be an eight inch uh, wide stab. There's a fin, rudder, stabilizer, and the two elevator halves. We need to join the elevator halves. I just use a little bit of a dowel and I parks it in place and just match the stab up there to make sure that everything is fit and aligned. Starting the covering now, this is the bottom of the wing. The servos are glued into place. The servo uh, wire leads are correctly put in there and when the covering will keep everything inside. I, I don't add the servos after the covering with a smaller wing like such as this. And here is the finished wing. Uh, ailerons need to be installed and just that's all there is to it. This is the fuselage. You can see a little bit different color. The landing gear is in place with some uh, collars to hold on the wheel. I'll put a hatch on top uh, to access the battery and the stab and elevators are shown in place. We've glued on the fin and rudder. You can see the hatch uh, for the uh, front and just an easy to use a hinge for the rudder. Here's an underside view for the control horns. I use popsicle sticks, just drilled a hole, glued those in place. It works fine for lighter models like this. Notice the bottom is open to save a little bit of weight. Here the covering is on the uh, nose. The landing gear, as we talked about, is stitched in place with a metal uh, beading thread. And then finally, here is the servos in place and the shrink uh, tubing overlapping uh, control rods to help with the adjustment. I finished the Mini Pronto. It came together pretty quick this afternoon, and this is what the little guy looks like. So it's half the size of the regular Pronto, 24-inch uh, wingspan versus 48, and um, the weight came out at 7 ounces. A little bit heavier than I would have liked. We always like lighter models, but... Uh, keep in mind it's small less than 8.8 .8 ounces so no <coughs> remote id or registration needed four channels and here everything is so you can see uh, through the covering here the aileron servos are uh, hot glued in place inside the wing just straight wire connectors to there i kept the bottom of the fuselage open just so i could access the control rods and save just a little bit of weight notice i took the two music wires for the control rods, overlapped them with the sh heat shrink tubing, got it just the right length, uh, shrunk those on, and that just connects to the servos in there. So nothing really special for the control horns. I used the ends of pop popsicle sticks and just uh, put a little hole in that for the uh, control rods. The landing gear we've talked about that's sewn in up front, the motor uh, from Flight Test, it's uh, Power Package A from Flight Test for the servos of the motor, worked out pretty well. Held on by rubber bands, and um, yeah, so I think everything's okay. What we'll do now, we'll power it up and just show you the controls of the motor, and we'll wait for a good day at the field to go ahead and fly it. The battery is installed. I have a little hatch here, just a two-cell battery. And the way the center of gravity works out, if it's the battery's right in the um, middle of the wing here, it works out good. This is where the balance point is. That's just about 25% uh, from the wing leading edge. So that's fine there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the control throws. We'll go with the elevator, up, down, I think that should be enough, and the rudder left and right, and then the ailerons are like that. Also, we'll do the motor, I'll steer clear of this, I think there should be enough thrust. I 
I think that should be sufficient for the flight. So that's the airplane. I'm happy the way that came out, and we will just wait for a calm day of the field and go take it for a test flight. Okay, so we're out here at the field today. It looks like a beautiful weather day. We've got the Mini Pronto, and we're going to try to give it its first test flight. So I'll plug in the battery, do a control check, and then we'll see if we can take off. All right. Okay. This is the No Kidding Made in Flight. Thanks to Ethan for doing the video work. Very nice job. So plenty of power with the 7-ounce airplane. It took off and just climbed out very nicely. Uh, so it's a smaller model. You want to keep the turn so you can keep everything in sight. But a very good feel. I think I may decrease the aileron throw just a little bit, but just a very responsive, fun-to-fly model on no complaints whatsoever. And just doing some uh, turns and flybys, and finally we'll come in for a landing. Uh, just reduce the power, it comes right on in. Uh, just a very pleasant, fun flying airplane to uh, add to your fleet. All right, so I want to thank Ethan for taking this video here. We had a very nice first flight of the Mini Pronto. I was very happy with the way that it flew. It had plenty of power with the engine, the weight seemed to be okay. It was responsive. We even did a little loop per um, Maxwell's request, and I'm very happy with the way it flies and handles. So thank you for watching the video, and I'll see you on future YouTube videos.